today I want to talk to you guys about how to write a literature review. I know a literature review can be a really massive undertaking and it can feel really complicated sometimes on how do you get all the information that you feel like you need to include in a literature review, what should your topic be, how do you even find the papers, all of these things. So today I'm going to go really simply through a process that I've used to write multiple literature reviews up to this point. So the very first step you want to take is to find your literature review topic. And whenever you're looking for a lit review topic, a lot of researchers go way too broad with their topic. For example, in graduate school, I did research in steroids and their analysis by eye mobility mass spectrometry. And a lot of people in that field may try and do a huge lit review on something like steroids analysis by mass spectrometry or just ion mobility in general. I know one of the students that was in my lab tried to do a lit review on just ion mobility and everything encompassing in it. And especially when you're first starting out in your research field, you shouldn't even be thinking about a lit review. You want to get into the research side of things first before you actually start thinking about a lit review because when you don't even know how to conduct the research, you have no idea how to accurately tell a story of other people's research. All you're really doing is summarizing, and that's not going to be overall helpful, and it's going to be really hard to publish those papers if all you're doing is summarizing. So instead, you want to get into your research, and I would actually really suggest that you have completed one research project before trying to dive in and write a literature review for publication. So once you've completed that project, think about what a field would be that is related to your research project that if you're a grad student or even a postdoc has about six to 12 really strong papers in it. And so why six to 12? Basically six to 12 is a really good short review. It's not gonna be one of your comprehensive guides like it would be if I wrote a lit review on IM mobility because that is such a large field, it's going to take you a really long time to do it justice. But if you keep adding keywords in to make that field smaller and smaller, you can actually write a really good lit review in about a month to two months without having to overwork yourself. So for example, my main lit review that was published was steroid analysis by eye mobility. So specifically, I focused on steroids analysis by eye mobility mass spectrometry, but most eye mobility analysis is done by mass spectrometry, so I didn't include that keyword in the title. So that field had about, I think, eight papers when I published that review, and it was overall a really good review on the topic and include all the major advancements that had been done recently in it. So create a topic that is highly relative to the research you're actually doing, and then when you can go look for papers and see if you can find about six to 12. If you feel like when you first do a search for papers, there's over a hundred papers, it's time to narrow that topic more so you can write a more effective literature review. So then the second step is to actually go and find your research articles. And I highly recommend using different tools to be able to do this. I think the most common one and the one that I used when I was doing my graduate research was Google Scholar. And so you can go and just type in the keywords that demonstrate the field. So for example, in my case, I would type in steroids and I am mobility, and I'll have links to different YouTube video tutorials down below on all the softwares that I talk about today. But what's nice with something like Google Scholar is it's going to sort it by relevancy. So you can look at a Google Scholar search, look at those that are highest up in search, and as you go down in search, you want to see the breakpoint to where the titles don't really feel like they belong in your specific topic that you're doing your lit review on. And that's kind of when you know that it's a good breakpoint to kind of stop looking at those titles. Other tools have come out since I was in grad school, and one of my favorite ones for literature reviews is Elicit. And so you can go to elicit.org, it's spelled E-L-I-C-I-T, and it 
allows you to enter in a research question. It uses the GPT-3 model that ChatGPT is based off of, and it will find actual papers, unlike ChatGPT, which gives you false references. It will find actual papers and it will actually produce summaries. It can give you things like what interventions were used, what outcomes were measured, what species were used in those papers. And so you can look at Elicit and be able to get a variety of different papers that would be really good for your literature review. And then you can also see, just like you could on Google Scholar, when those papers really are no longer as relevant, and then be able to build up your foundation there. Now, you do want to make sure you're not missing any highly relevant papers. And I think a lot of people get stuck on finding research articles because every time they search, they find something that could be relevant and feel like they need to include it. And you need to just kind of resign yourself that you're not going to find every single paper that could be relevant to your topic. Your goal in writing a lit review is creating a story that other researchers can learn from and synthesizing something from all the individual papers. So if you're just focused on getting every single paper and trying to write a summary, you're going to be stuck on that forever and you're never going to move forward. So you want to get to a point where you feel like you have a really, really strong story and then and look for any gaps that are in that story. So if you're you've got some links to okay, we did steroid analysis by LC IMS and then we did it by just IMS and you want to find out if there's like something else happening in the field, then do that search. But ultimately you don't need to have every single paper involved in your literature to be able to do a lit review on that topic. And then finally, one other tool that can be really helpful is ResearchRabbit. If you have things from Elicit, you can put them into ResearchRabbit and see if there's any other connected papers that you may be missing there. So once you have all of your research papers, it's time to go into step number three, which is organizing those research papers. So what you really want to do is organize, figure out how you're going to organize them. So you can do it chronologically. So when were they being published? You can do it thematically. So all of these papers talk about this theme. All of these papers talk about this theme. If you're doing something like a systematic review, you need to have very specific inclusion and exclusion criteria because essentially a systematic review is using previously published papers as your data to create a new research review, basically. So you need to know why do you include a paper? Why do you not include a paper? And then you need to organize them by the conclusions that you're trying to reach. What are your research questions as you're going through? And then how are you analyzing it and answering those research questions? Now, for more of a narrative review, I really suggest going thematically and then organizing your themes chronologically. That's how I've written my reviews in the past, and I think it's a really good model that works well for seeing what are the major themes and then in what order did, did those themes start happening in the field. And maybe a lot of them were going parallel. So they were work being done in this sector and this sector, and they were both at the same time. Then you just kind of have to think about what makes sense in moving forward. And then once you have your themes, once you, your themes are going to become your headings in your literature story. Once you have those, then you just want to make sure you know all your research articles that are under those. And this is where you can start going through and kind of summarizing those research articles and figuring out what your story is actually going to be. So you, the goal of this is not to say that in steroid analysis by IM Mobility, people did LC, they added IMS to LC first, and then they did standalone and they did derivatization and they did group, they did metal adduction to be able to separate. That is not your overall story. You want to talk about, okay, why did the field move forward in this way? What are the things that the field has not been able to do yet? What are the things we're not addressing yet and need to still focus on? So instead, my story was IMS was first introduced to steroid analysis initially in conjunction with LC. And because of this, they were able to get higher separation of steroids with LC. Next in the field, we wanted to 
remove the LC to make a faster analysis time. And the first way that we did this was derivatization. However, in derivatization, this can cause loss of sample. You can cause, you're adding in confounding variables, all of these things. So the next thing we did in the field was turn to metal adduction. And we found that we could form dimers. And in these dimers, you can actually better separate steroid isomers from each other because of this. However, these are the issues that arise with this. And so we're going through, you're identifying, okay, this is the theme that happened. Why did the field continue to move this way? Why did it change all of these things? And in the end, you really need to be able to synthesize something from it. So you need to be able to synthesize why did the field go a certain direction? What are the limitations of that? And what should be done in the future if you're doing a narrative review? So the next step, once you've organized your research articles, you know your story, step number four is to actually communicate your story. And I don't mean like write it out. I mean, say it out to someone else. Make sure, ask them, is there any holes I'm missing? Are there any papers that you know of that you think would go in well? Is the, you want to first work on communicating it most likely verbally so that people understand they don't need to know every single paper that you're talking about in your literature review. But if you can actually communicate your story out loud, your lit review when you write it is not going to sound like a bunch of summaries copied and pasted together. It's going to sound like an actual story is occurring. This is also where you want to make clear those connections and what you're synthesizing from it. What did you learn from the lit review and how do you think the field should move forward? And then finally, your step number five is to actually write your lit review. The nice thing is, while this is only the one step, it's your final step in the sequence, the nice thing is that all the previous work you've been doing up to this point has made it to where this step is actually going to be really easy. I think a lot of people get stuck on writing your lit review because they haven't even created the story yet. They're just sitting here like, oh, I'm just going to put in this background information. I'm just going to put in a summary of this paper. And then they try and link it together instead of thinking story first and then writing later. So in a typical narrative lit review, you're going to have an introduction, then you're gonna walk through your story. Obviously, it's not called a story. Your headings are just gonna be your different themes. And then you're gonna have generally a conclusion section. So in your introduction, whenever you've created a story, you want to ask yourself, what are the things that someone needs to know to understand my story? So in my example, steroid analysis by I am ability, Someone needs to know what steroids are, what are they used for, why do we care to analyze them? Someone needs to know what eye mobility is and the types of eye mobility I'm gonna talk about and things like that. And those are probably the two biggest. I might include a little bit about mass spectrometry or LC or why this is even worth uh, studying, why is steroid analysis difficult, all of these things. That's gonna be my introduction. And you always want it to flow where it makes, it feels like the reader is moving into the first theme. So if my first theme was LC, analysis with eye mobility like combined, I would first start out talking about steroids, why steroids are important, then talk about why steroids are hard to analyze, bring in basic information on eye mobility, and then talk about how eye mobility can be combined with other instruments like LCE or mass spec or any of the other instruments. And then it makes a really nice transition into my first theme, talking about combining those together and the literature that's been done on it. And that helps me create that story of here's your background information. It's like whenever you're watching a movie and like the first like 15, 20 minutes is all really them telling a story, but it's really just giving background information so you can understand the rest of the movie. Like, why is the person sad? Why are they in this state? All of this stuff. That's the background information you want to be giving. And then you go into the story, how the field has moved forward. Again, this is the story you've already communicated. So it really should be fairly easy to write. Certain softwares that you can use with this, I would definitely recommend using something like Zotero is really great for being able to cite while you're writing and organize your papers in there. You can even create subheadings in your Zotero and organize your papers that way. Another great way to 
create out your story would be Notion. And so I have a Notion template to organize research articles. I'll leave that link in the description below as well. So if you want to um, use that to be able to figure out, okay, what are the different themes going on here? Things like that, that would work really well too. And then finally, in your conclusion, you want to be thinking about what are the main, where's the field up to this point? So what's the main conclusion of the field to this point? Then what are the limitations currently still in this field? So in my lit review, we had gotten to the point where we were doing like standalone analysis, but there were still certain steroids that couldn't be separated well just by metal adduction alone. And this made it especially complicated when you got into more biological mixtures that have multiple different steroids in them and even other things in them. So we actually reintroduced LC again to be able to handle some of that, but we were able to shorten the run times and get higher information from it because of the work that we did in the eye mobility. So that's still a limitation, right? Like we didn't get to stand alone. So what are some ways that we could potentially get to stand alone in the future? It doesn't make sense for us to go ahead and assume that we need to incorporate LC or even one of the things that I talked about in my conclusion kind of synthesis future work was we really need to start thinking about biological mixtures. Like we need to start running these methods on actual biological samples to make sure that this actually works in a biological sense and we're not just, you know, creating a method. So these are all things that you need to be thinking about and be referencing whenever you're trying to come up with your conclusion. Those are the five different steps that you want to walk through whenever you're writing your lit review. You want to find a concise literature review topic, then you're going to find the articles you're going to use. You want to organize those articles and then create and communicate your story from those articles. And then finally write your actual lit review. And it's going to make it so much easier when you actually try to write. I will leave a few videos here on the screen for different softwares you can use to write your literature review. And if this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more research tips on how to become an efficient researcher. And I hope to see you in the next video.